Up first, we have George Washington, who was born in 1732 and passed away in 1799. He was commander in chief of the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War that was from 1775 to 1783 and served two terms as the first president from 1789 to 1797. The son of a prosperous planter, Washington was raised in a colonial Virginia. As a young man, he worked as a surveyor, then fought in the French and Indian War from 1754 to 1763. During the American Revolution, he led colonial forces to victory over the British and became a national hero. In 1787, he was elected president of the convention that wrote the U.S. Constitution. Two years later, Washington became America's first president. Uh, realizing that the way he handled the job would impact how future presidents approached the position, he handed down a legacy of strength, integrity, and national purpose. Less than three years after leaving office, he passed away at his Virginia plantation, Mount Vernon, at the age of 67. George Washington was born on February 22nd, um, 1732, at his family's plantation in Pokes Creek in West Westmoreland County. Um, in the British colony of Virginia to Augustine Washington, who is, whose life spanned from 1694 to 1743, and his second wife, Mary Bell Washington, whose life lasted from 1708 to 1789. George, the oldest of Augustine, and Mary Washington's six children spent much of his childhood at Ferry Farm, a plantation near Fredericksburg, Virginia. After Washington's father passed away when he was 11, it's likely he helped his mother manage the plantation. Did you know, at the time of his death in 1799, George Washington owned some 300 enslaved people. However, before his passing, he had become opposed to slavery and in his will, he ordered that his enslaved workers be freed after his wife's death. Um, few details about Washington's early education are known. Although children of uh, prosperous families like, like his typically were taught at home by private tutors or attended private schools. It's believed he finished his former schooling around the age of 15. As a teenager, Washington, who had shown an aptitude for mathematics, became a successful surveyor. His surveying expeditions into the Virginia wilderness earned him enough money to begin acquiring land of his own. In 1751, Washington made his only trip outside of America when he traveled to Barbados with his older half-brother, Lawrence Washington, whose life spanned from 1718 to 1752, who was suffering from tuberculosis and hoped the warm climate would help him recuperate. Shortly after their arrival, George contracted uh, smallpox. He survived, although the illness left him with permanent facial scars. In 1752, Lawrence, who had been educated in England and served as Washington's mentor, passed. Uh, Washington eventually inherited Lawrence's estate, Mount Vernon, on the 
Potomac River near Alexandria, Virginia. In December of 1752, Washington, who had no previous military expense, was made a commander in the Virginia Militia. He saw action in the French and Indian War and was eventually put in charge of all Virginia's Militia forces. By 1759, Washington had resigned as his commission, returning to Mount Vernon, and was elected to the Virginia House of Burger Burgeries, where he served until 1774. In January of 1759, he married Martha, Martha Dan Dandridge Curtis. Whose life spanned from 1731 to 1802, a wealthy widow with two children. Washington became a devoted stepfather to her children. He and Martha never had any offsprings of their own. In the ensuing years, Washington expanded Mount Vernon from 2,000 acres into an 8,000 acre property with five farms. He grew a variety of crops, including wheat and corn. Bread, mules, and maintained fruit orchards as a, and a successful fishery. He was deeply interested in farming and continually experimented with new crops and methods of land conservation. Washington provided proved to be a, a better general than military strategist. His strength, lay, strength lay not in his genius on the battlefield, but his ability to keep the struggling co colonial army together. His troops were poorly trained and lacked food, ammunition, and other supplies. Soldiers sometimes even went without shoes in winter. However, Washington was able to give them direction and motivation. His leadership during the winter of 1777 and 1778 at Valley Forge was a testament to his power to inspire his men to keep going. By the late 1760s, Washington had experienced firsthand the effects of rising taxes imposed on American colonists by the British and came to believe it would be in the best interest of the colonists to declare independence from England. Washington served as a delegate to the First Continental Congress in 1774 in Philadelphia. By the time the Second Continental Congress convened a year later, the American Revolution had begun in earnest, and Washington was named Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army. Over the course of the grueling eight-year war, the colonial forces won few battles, but constantly held their own against the British. In October of 1781, with the aid of the French, who allied, allied themselves with the colonists over their rivals of the British. The Continental forces were able to ca uh, capture British troops under General Charles Cornwalls, whose life spanned from 1738 to 1805 in the Battle of Yorktown. This action effectively ended the Revolutionary War, and Washington was declared a national hero. In 1783, with the signing of the Treaty of Paris between Great Britain and the U.S., Washington believed he had done his duty and gave up his command of the army and returned to Mount Vernon, intent on resuming his life as a gentleman, farmer, and family man. However, in 1787, he was asked to attend the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia 
and head the committee to draft a new constitution. His impressive leadership there convinced the delegates that he was by far the most qualified man to become the nation's first president. At first, Washington balked. He wanted to at last return to a quiet life at home and leave governing to the governing the new nation to others. But public opinion was so strong that eventually he gave in. The first presidential election was held on January 7, 1789, and Washington won handedly. John Adams, who life span from 1735 to 1826, who received the second largest number of votes, became the first the nation's first vice president. The 57-year-old Washington was inaugurated on April 30th, 1789 in New York City. Because Washington DC, America's future capital city, wasn't yet built, he lived in New York and Philadelphia. While in office, he signed a bill establishing a future permanent U.S. capital along the Potomatic River. The city later was named Washington, D.C. in his honor. Until next time.